Hi, I'm Mariam Ghani, and I'm an artist, writer, and filmmaker. I'm here to tell you about what we left unfinished. It's a film and research project about five unfinished Afghan films shot, but never edited, between 1978 and 1992. So a lot happened during these years, an Afghan communist coup d'etat, land reforms that sparked rural resistance, internal purges leading to the Soviet invasion and puppet regime, long years of bitter fighting around the regime-controlled cities, the withdrawal of the Soviet army and aid, a five-year attempt at national reconciliation, the handover of power to a Mujahideen coalition, and finally, dissolution into civil war. What We Left Unfinished combines footage from the unfinished fiction films, unedited newsreel rushes, and the behind-the-scenes narratives of filmmakers, crew, and actors to illuminate the gap between the stories being told on screen during this period, which all seem to take place in an imaginary People's Democratic Republic of Afghanistan that maybe could have been, but definitely wasn't, and the reality happening just outside the frame, a utopian project secured by violent force, which occasionally seeps into the world on screen. So I'm going to show you a quick teaser now, uh, which is made out of uh, test interviews and rush prints, to give you a sense of the material. خواهد با خاطر اینی که ما نداشتیم و استیلا نداشتیم ما استیجوی پر مردایی استیجوی این دور نداشتیم که این زمینه ها برای ما ساخته می شود با جلوه های ویژه اما هر چیز می کردیم خود ما می کردیم در وقت و یکی یک خاطری بسیار کوچک دیگه میاد ما بده بیاد از فلم کجرا یک نقش داره یک بسیار خنجر می کرد قدش بخش است این ما از یکو خواهدم لول بدم لیکن ما برای آرد داری تر خود گفتم که یک مکیت تذیره بساست یک مکیت بساست که ما این لباس شو بکشم از کولو بکنه این جوان این بچه برای ما گونه ما خود بکنه بعد تمام جان از این ما با امی تیوب موتر نید که تیوب موتر کلان این گرفتیم تیوب موتر پوشاندیم دستایش و پایش و همه جانش هست بعد کالایش رو پوشاندیم از خوب بسیار شاد زیبا آمده در یک شد ما از لو انگل گرفتیم ملاق میخ... تقریبا چل ملاق خورد تا پیشوری که هم نرسید ما اگر جلوه های بیجه می داشتیم در وقت ما می تا از کمپیوتر کار کنیم اما جوان این کار را ما کرد به جان اوگارم شده اگر دازه این در هر فلم این می ما مشکلات خود ما داشتیم مثلا از مرمی اصلی ما استفاده می کنیم صحنه شده که یک کارگردان ما مثلا رحمت الله خوستای میگه یک آدم یک اکتورش زد یک اکتور دیگر در پیشانیش که مرمی زد جای بیرون پشتش برای این کنم های افغانستان همین پرابلم ها رو دارد لیکن با همه این همین پرابلم ها در وقت اونا مقدر کار که شما در سینما های سابق میبینید اونا مقدر با بسیار مشکلات زیاد گرفته میشد and that is not even the craziest story he told me. So What We Left Unfinished will ultimately be a feature-length doc fiction film, which I'm hoping to finish by the end of 2017. But along the way, it also involves extensive writing, fun sidebars like designing posters, and long-term collaborations with the original filmmakers, the Afghan National Film Archive, and other partners to organize exhibitions, screenings, and conversations around the original films which create opportunities for us to imagine how the unfinished projects of the past might be finished in the present. For example, silent rush prints screened with running commentary from leftist exiles, or with scores improvised live. And the music you heard on the teaser, by the way, was from this uh, improv session in Vienna. What We Left Unfinished is about both artistic and political projects left unfinished by the Afghan left. And yes, there was and is an Afghan left. In the 70s and 80s, Afghan filmmaking became intertwined with the image and image making of the Afghan communists. And the party's political projects of revolution, reform, and reconciliation threaded through both propaganda and fiction films. As these films came to represent the dreaming desires, fears, ambitions, and ghosts of the state, filmmaking itself became a dangerous enterprise, and filmmakers became targets for attacks against the state. In Finnish films of the period, it's more difficult to tease out document from fiction, encoded histories from contextual clues, what was from what could have been. Unfinished films are more raw, of course, but they also come with a sort of key, the stories of why they were abandoned or canceled. One, because the leader who commissioned it was assassinated, 
another because the filmmaker fled into exile, the third because its coded critique of state surveillance was a little too easy to read, a fourth because the entire regime collapsed, and there you have a capsule history of the whole communist period. I have access to the films and filmmakers, knowledge about their history and context, and my own long history of working in Afghanistan and with the archive that controls the footage. But I need money to license the footage and of course produce the feature. A producer and DP to help me navigate the transition from the art world to feature films. Telecine services and other post-production support. And additional venues or co-commissioners for exhibitions, screenings, and events organized around the original films. Ideally, I'd like to help the original filmmakers finish their own films in their own ways, at the same time that I make my film about them, weaving parts of those fictions into a larger true story about filmmaking and state mythmaking. And I'd also like to do a book that pulls all these different project pieces together. Duck fiction hybrids are fashionable these days, but they also have a really long history in Afghan cinema. The unfinished film you're watching right now in the month of Saar is a perfect example of those blurred lines between fact and fiction, past and present a reenactment of the coup d'etat of 1978, performed by the actual army for a film commissioned by the leaders of the party who also appear in the film. Uh, this fiction actually became the default document of the 1978 coup, popping up as stock footage in various other films until even its own director began referring to it as a documentary. <laughs> for audiences outside Afghanistan, what we left unfinished is an entry point into a totally unknown history of Afghan artists, intellectuals, leftists, and modernists. And inside Afghanistan, we're just being, beginning to be able to talk about the communist period. Many histories that have long been off limits are slowly resurfacing into public discourse, and it's happening through the ambiguous spaces of art. Sometimes it's easier to look to fiction for truths that are too difficult to face when presented as facts. Afghanistan's still balanced on the edge of collapse, but if what we left unfinished in the past is worth finishing in the present, we may still preserve some things from the flames. Thank you.